This morning in the Atlanta airport, no one's missing a meal on Mac Wilburn's watch. With 11 restaurants to serve passengers, he's got dining for every destination. And it all started when Mac talked with First Horizon Bank about opening a franchise in the airport. Now it's open for business and cleared for takeoff. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Tonight in Arkansas, there's a mother tucking in her daughter and turning off the light. A business owner is burning the midnight oil. An at-home dinner date is plating up possibility. And it's all happening under one roof. How? The power of a conversation. Like the one John from Integrity Solutions had with First Horizon Bank about his vision for a sustainable mixed-use building. Now it's not just words, it's life. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash John. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. All right, class, quiet down, please. Jimmy, would you tell the class what you learned about squirt fruit? Squirt fruit is what happens to real grapefruit when it gets inside bottles of squirt. Anything else? Well, I couldn't find much more about squirt fruit, but I learned a lot about squirt. It's a natural soft drink with no artificial colors or flavors. I guess it makes sense to call grapefruit squirt fruit. Maybe they should put squirt fruit in the dictionary. Also, I like squirt very much. Very good, Jimmy. Now, class, it's time for music appreciation. Oh, the grapefruit don't grow on a vine. It ain't even purple and it makes lousy wine. So call it squirt fruit if you would. Call it tastes just like squirt and that's good. Oh, the squirt fruit, it's squirt, it's kicks. It's a tangy soft drink, it's a great party mix. So call it squirt fruit if you would. Call it tastes just like squirt. And that's good. WFA. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to another hour of mystery and suspense. To an incredible tale of terror among the world-famous granite statues of the secluded Minotti Sculpture Garden in the forbidding foothills of the Colorado Rockies. The silence of the night is suddenly pierced by the frantic cries of a woman inside the caretaker's cottage, trying to call the police. Operator! Operator! I want the police! Hurry! Please! Please! Oh, God! Sheriff Talbot. Hurry! Hurry! Oh, now, now, just take it easy, ma'am. Where are you? Care, caretaker's Cottage. Benoni Garden. Please, hurry! Hurry! Now, calm down, ma'am. Where's the caretaker, Pietro? I, I, I don't know. I ran here. The door was open. Please! Please! Hurry! A ran? From what? One of the statues. A statue of a man. And I passed it. His hand reached out, touched my back, called my name. What? It touched me. The statue touched me. Hurry, please. Please. Our mystery drama, Taken for Granite was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Hank Warner and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and by the Florida Orange Growers. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's your health, and you should know. Dr. Thomas E. Bryant, president of the Drug Abuse Council in Washington, D.C., brings you these important facts about the mixed use of drugs. The most serious health consequences associated with heavy drug use in America today come with indiscriminate mixing of different drugs, sedatives followed by stimulants, mixing alcohol with sleep-inducing pills like barbiturates. These are the really dangerous drugs because they kill, and overdoses are so often fatal. Yet the problem is not really the drugs themselves, but with why they are taken. It is this underlying need or desire to escape or to feel different that leads to trouble with the drugs. The most pressing need is for preventive measures, Awareness alone is not enough, though it is important. 
People need alternatives to drugs to make them feel good, to make them feel life is worthwhile, to relieve their depression and their apathy. Supplying realistic alternatives to drugs is a challenge not just for the health professions, but for all of society. It's your health. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau on the metric system. You know, the worldwide trend today is toward a universal system of measurement, the metric system. The names of this new system may sound strange to you at first, but fortunately, there are only a few words that have to be learned for everyday use. And these are the millimeter, centimeter, meter, and kilometer for describing length and distance, the milliliter and liter for capacity or volume, the gram, kilogram, and ton for weight, the kilometer per hour for highway speed, and the degree Celsius or centigrade for temperature. You're already using some of these terms more than you may realize. For example, when you go to the supermarket, you see weights expressed in grams on more and more packaged items. Now, for more information on this whole metric system, write to Metric Information Office, National Bureau of Standards, Washington, D.C. join the group of tourists in the charter bus parked in front of the Hotel Barrett in Barrettsville, the Colorado Mountain Resort. They are waiting cheerfully and unaware, unaware that the one member of the group who has not yet boarded the bus is doomed, if she shows up in time, to take the last ride of her life. Attention, please. Are we all here? Now, we should be 24, yes? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three. Oh, still one missing. Always one missing. There's always Miss Masterson. Oh, that young lady will be the death of me. It's just not fair to the rest of you. Well, I ought to go see what's keeping her. Oh, here she is coming out of the hotel. Hurry! Hurry! Oh, I'm sorry. I just oh, couldn't get help. in, get in, get in. Always excuses. Okay. John, we go now. <laughs> Angelo Minotti was born in Florence, Italy. At the age of 20, his genius as a sculptor was discovered by Silas Barrett, the eccentric gold-mining millionaire and art collector who brought Minotti here. After working for 15 years, Minotti completed his monumental work. More than 50 life-size nude granite figures depicting the universal life cycle of mankind from infancy to death at old age. We are almost there, about a half mile up this side road. The sculpture garden was open to the public for less than one year until Silas Barrett's young wife and Angelo Minotti mysteriously disappeared. Silas Barrett ordered the garden closed for as long as he lived, 12 years. And the Parkland were bequeathed to Barrett College with a proviso that permission to visit the sculpture garden could be granted only by the chairman of the Fine Arts Department, currently Dr. Janus Kellerman. Oh, here we are. Now, please remain in the bus, everyone, until the gates are open. You can park right there. Are, are you the caretaker, Pietro Franzoni? At your service. Signora Manor, have you? Yes. Dr. Kellerman phoned me you were on your way. Would you like me to escort you? Uh, thank you, thank you. But that won't be necessary, really. Dr. Kellerman gave me these pamphlets about the exhibit. As you wish, Signora. If you should need me, I will be in my cottage. I must lock the gate. Are there any other gates? No, oh, this is the only gate. There is an iron fence all around the park. When you're ready, your driver can blow the horn. I'll come back in my Jeep. It's not far from my cottage here. Thank you. Oh, dear me, it's clouding up. Do you think it will rain? Uh, could be, maybe. Thunder shower. Over soon. I'll go now. Uh, you can see on your pamphlet the diagram of the exhibits. Now, we will go down this broad path 
to the self-sculpture of Minotti at work. Then, along the groupings of the life cycle statues. Then, to the fountain. The exhibits are numbered and explained. Behind the curtain of water, falling over the brim of the huge saucer-shaped bowl, are seven male figures straining to support the saucer. Some straining with greater effort than others, reflecting Minotti's philosophy that not all members of society are equally burdened. Oh, oh, we'd better hurry back to the bus. Come, hurry, hurry, everyone, hurry. For heaven's sake, it's just, oh, oh, well, we're just in time. In the bus, in the bus, close the door. John, John, blow the horn. We'd better start back. Oh, oh, am I Now, let's see. Are we all here? No. 20, 22, 23. Oh, no, Miss Masterson again. Oh, this is too much. This is too much. Are you leaving now, Signora? I shall open the gates. One of our group is missing. Did you see her? Oh, A I, young lady? I, I, I didn't see anyone. Did you want me to look for her? What's her name? Helen Masterson. No, 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 wait. Do you have a telephone? Telephone? Yes, Signora. In my cottage. I must teach her a lesson. We will not wait. She can telephone for a cab and pay for it herself. Open the gate, please. Uh, are you sure? Please, unlock the gate. Anyone here? Hello? Hello? Come in. Come in. You are so wet. Oh, yes. You're shivering. Did you get lost? Yes, I... I, I missed the bus. Come close to the fire. I will put more wood on. Oh, you are cold. Would you like some brandy? Here. Here, drink it. It will warm you. Oh, thank you. Oh, your clothes, they are very wet. Here. I have a warm robe. You go into the other room and take off your wet clothes. We will hang them by the fire until they dry. Your clothes are not dry yet. Uh, more espresso? You can try it with a little more brandy. Oh, yes, please. Oh, this is such a charming room. I just love these animal figures. The frog, the turtle, that cat. They're simply magnificent. Who did them? Minotti? <laughs> Minotti? No, no. No, I made them. I am the creator. You? They are beautiful. You are surprised. I understand. You wonder how Pietro can do it with only one good hand, no? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you had... Oh, that's all right. Look, three fingers on my right hand are no good. Crushed. They can no longer hold a hammer. Crushed? Well, a long time ago, when I came to this country, I was an apprentice to Minotti. A big block of granite fell on my hand and crushed my fingers. Oh, how awful. What a terrible accident. It was no accident. Minotti was careless. Careless? But sometimes I think he was not so careless. I think he knew what he was doing. But why? Why would he let something like that happen? Because he was jealous. He knew Mr. Barrett liked my work. He heard him say so many times. Oh, Minotti, he was a great genius, but... He said, ah, said, ah. Mr. Barrett and Minotti, they built this cottage and made me caretaker here. As you can see, I am still caretaker. But you are an artist. These animal figures. If you don't carve them, how do you make them look like sculptures? I just adore this turtle. You like the turtle. Here, for you, take it. A present. Oh, thank you. I... 
I just love it. You are an art student? <laughs> you are simpatico. Uh, I will show you my secret. Secret? Come. I will show you my workshop. In here. A studio? What are these machines? This one crushes stone, makes granite chips. This is a grinder to grind the chips and make the granite like sand. The turtle. Feel how heavy it is. Uh, like stone, but not solid stone. Uh, I will show you. I take the granite sand. I mix in very thin lacquer, like this, in a blender. I put the mixture in the paint sprayer. So... Put a real live turtle on the table like this. Now, you watch and you will see. Spray turtle. So. Ah, now it is wet. I sprinkle a little bit of dry powder. It will soon dry and look like before. But a little bit heavier. How oh, ingenious. And the frog, the cat, the dog, the bird. Same technique? Mostly the same. I experiment sometimes with taxidermy before I use the spray. Well, this has been a real pleasure, Mr. Franzoni. My clothes must be quite dry by now. Miss so it... uh, Masterson? What is it? May I ask about your art school? What? Have you ever modeled at the school? Oh, now and then. Why? If you will forgive me, Miss Masterson, I can tell, even with the robe on, that you have a most beautiful body. Oh, thank you. It really is rather average. No, oh, no. It is beautiful. Please, do not be offended. I would like, if you will permit me, to make a plaster cast of you. Please, as a remembrance. That's very sweet, Mr. Branzoni, but I, I really must be getting back to town. If you call me a cab, we're, uh, we're all going to a square dance after oh, dinner. I, I beg you, please. But why a cast of my body? It will take too long. Why, why not a death match? I work fast. It will not take long. Then I will drive you back to your hotel. What? What will you do with the plaster cast? I will reassemble the sections and spray the entire cast with my granite solution. It will be the centerpiece of my first exhibition. Well, if it really won't take too oh, long... Oh, thank you, Miss Masterson. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kellerman, I, 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 I'm sorry to trouble you. Oh, not at all, not uh, at all. Uh, now, uh, what can I do for you? Uh, well, I, uh, Did your group enjoy the visit to the Minotti Garden? Too bad it rained. Uh, would you have some coffee? Uh, no, 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 thank you. You seem upset. I, I'm afraid I, I, I am quite upset. Oh, why? Yeah. One member of our group, Miss Masterson, Helen Masterson, yeah. is... Well, she's missing. What? She didn't come back on the bus with us. Miss... Mannerhoff, are you telling me you left her there, actually left her there? I'm afraid so. I, I, I'm afraid something terrible may have happened. Our horrified Dr. Kellerman has our sympathy. We can understand his agitation. All he probably can imagine is that another mysterious disappearance inside the sculpture garden will revive the notoriety and scandal of the still unsolved mystery of Mrs. Barrett and Angela Minotti. As for Miss Masterson, it does seem that for the role of a devotee of art for art's sake, she is well cast. <laughs> I'll be back shortly with Act Two. This is Jack Lemon. If you are a parent of one of America's seven million handicapped children, you know how hard it can be to get straight information, especially about special education for your child. 
Now, the United States Office of Education has a special service that gathers information, especially for parents of handicapped children. The service is called Closer Look. Just write to Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. They'll send you all sorts of free information, including information about the rights of handicapped children, about special education, about what facilities are available in your area, and about parents groups that can help you. Now, Closer Look can't solve all your problems, but they can give you information that helps. So if you have a child with any kind of handicap, write Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. A public service message by this station and the United States Office of Education. This week, the word that sends cold chills to many people of the world. The shifting, trembling earth, falling objects, glass, debris are a constant threat. A threat to life and property for many countries, including the United States. And should an earthquake or other natural disaster occur, there are relief organizations to help, like your American Red Cross, always reaching out to people in trouble. The Red Cross disaster program meets the urgent needs of victims immediately after a disaster or in advance of a potential crisis. Red Cross help provides food, clothing, shelter, health services and other basic elements for comfort and survival. It uses all available resources in addition to its own to provide that vital aid. Always there, always ready. Ever extending a helping hand, just like a good neighbor. And that's what we are. Your American Red Cross. Dr. Kellerman faces a dilemma. Recovering from the first shock of being told that a missing tourist was last seen inside the sculpture garden, he must decide whether to call in the sheriff at once or further question Miss Mannerhoff himself. He has decided on the latter, which puts him at a decided disadvantage. After all, the curriculum of his fine arts department could hardly include a course in the fine art of murder. I simply cannot understand why you left her there. It's a totally irresponsible act, Miss Manahoff. I know. I, I know I shouldn't have. I asked Franzoni if he would call a cab for her to take her back to town. Uh, Doctor, I'm afraid I was very annoyed. But she was not at breakfast this morning. I, I asked the hotel manager to check her room just before I called you. Her room had not been slept in. Well, that is strange. Well, it happened several times on our tour, going off on her own to dinner and not sleeping in her own room. But she has always showed up at breakfast. Mm. Well, I suggest we approach this in orderly fashion. Yes. Uh, first, let me call the caretaker. You can listen on the extension. Uh, thank you. Hello? This is Dr. Kellerman, Pietro. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Uh, listen carefully, Pietro. Greta, the guide on the bus yesterday, is in my office, listening on an extension. Now, I have some questions. Yes, Dr. Kellerman? Did you see a young lady, uh, Miss Masterson, after the bus left? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Miss Masterson. She came to the cottage in the rain. She said she lost her way. She was very, very wet. She was here a short while until her clothes dried in front of the fire. Well, did you call a cab for her? I tried, but the line was busy. I was afraid she would get sick, so I drove her back to town in the Jeep. Well, uh, did you drive her to the hotel? Are you there, Pietro? Did you hear me? Did you drive her to the hotel? It stopped raining when we got to town. She said she wanted to do some shopping. I let her out on Main Street near the hotel. Yes, and then? I stopped at a drugstore for aspirin. I bought a bottle of Chianti at the supermarket and drove back here. Well, thank you, Pietro. Well, there, you heard. Yes, I heard. I'd better phone the sheriff. <laughs> Miss Masterson, Dr. Kellerman, he just called me. Greta was listening. They are wondering where you are. What happened to you? 
What could I tell them, Miss Masterson? That you died in the cast? That while I was putting the plaster of Paris on your face, some of it got into your nose, and that I went to make some fresh espresso while the cast was drying, and you died? It was not an accident, Miss Masterson. I was careless. Careless. That's all we know, Sheriff. What I told you on the phone. Unless Miss Manor... Uh, is... No, I can't think of anything else, Sheriff. Uh-huh. Uh, by the way, Doctor... Yes? I checked drugstore and liquor store on my way here. They both confirmed Pietro's story. Well, I never doubted it, Sheriff. And that's routine. Well, I guess you might as well put out an all-points bulletin of her description. Well, I should tell my home office. If she is missing, they'll want to alert her... her parents in, in, in Columbus. I'd better be getting back to the bus. I'll see you to the elevator. I'll be right back, Sheriff. Oh, we look forward to another visit with an art group soon. We plan to, Dr. Kellerman. Oh, you have a magnificent sculpture garden. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Thanks again. Uh, goodbye. Well, she's gone. What's on your mind, Doctor? What you sweating about? Her clothes. Her bags. Why she left them at the hotel. Yeah. That's not good, Doctor. If she doesn't show up at the hotel by 3 o'clock, I'll go over her room with the manager. Maybe a note, a clue, letters. You know why I'm so upset about this, Sheriff. You do know. I understand. She must be found. Now, it's taken years to live down the mystery of Sarah Barrett and Minotti. You know that we can't afford to have that revived. Particularly now that the Chamber of Commerce wants the garden reopened to the general public as a tourist attraction. Yeah, well, we'll do the best we can. I got to go now. I'll phone you after I see the hotel manager. <laughs> Kellerman speaking. Sheriff Talbot, Doc. Just gone over Miss Masterson's room. Not a thing. Mm. No note, no letters, clothes and bags still here. Looks bad, Doc. I was afraid of that. I'll phone Manorhoff tonight at the Broadmoor. According to her schedule, the group will be leaving there in the morning. Yes. She'd better be told. Thank you, Ben. What you'd like to see this, Doc, is the newspaper clipping I got in the mail this morning from the police chief in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Homer Masterson of Rosewood Heights reported today to police chief John Murray that their daughter, Helen, has been missing for the past two weeks. Miss Masterson is reported to have disappeared during a chartered bus tour of art exhibits in the West. Well... This morning in North Carolina... Wheels are spinning. Determination is winning. A passion is now a thriving business, and it shows no signs of slowing down. How? The power of a conversation, like the one Clint Spiegel had with First Horizon Bank about starting a bike wheel manufacturing facility in Asheville. Now it's not just talk, it's rubber meets road. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Clint. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Boost your brand's visibility with Image360, your expert source for comprehensive custom signs and graphic solutions. From standout office signage to dynamic trade show displays, Image360 has you covered. Leveraging years of experience with the latest technology, our team delivers solutions that surpass your every expectation. Ready to transform your company's visual communication strategy? Get a quote at image360signs.com today. Image360signs.com. These things have to come out sooner or later, I guess. At least there's no mention of Barrettsville. Keep your fingers crossed. Well, thanks for bringing it over, Ben. Keep in touch. Bye. Oh, uh, Jane, you can tell that young man, Dr. Larson, to come in now. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Doctor. Have a seat, please. Oh, I, I don't mind. 
I'm on vacation. <laughs> oh, backpacking, eh? Yeah. I'll just put it down anywhere. I've uh, got your card here. Here it is. Uh, uh, Dr. Arnold Larson, assistant curator of Cincinnati Museum of Fine Arts. <laughs> well, well, uh, how is Dr. Murdoch? We were classmates of Wisconsin, you know. Oh, he's fine. He sends regards. Well, then. Uh, now, then, uh, what can I do for you? When I told Dr. Murdoch I'd be spending my vacation backpacking through the Colorado Trailway, he suggested I drop by to see you. Good. And, of course, the Minotti Garden. Well, naturally, naturally. Now, uh, when would you like to visit the garden? Well, Any time it's convenient. This morning? That'd be fine. I'll have one of the men drive you out. Dr. Larson? I will open the gate. Well, welcome, Dr. Larson. Excuse me, I must lock the gate again. Well, this is magnificent. Yes, magnificent. <laughs> oh, your backpack. I'll take it to the cottage. Oh, thanks. Then when you finish, come back to my cottage, yes? Yes, thank you. You have a map? Of the garden? Uh-huh, in the brochure. Very good. You start that way and follow the sign. Hey, yes, yes, I'm sure I'll have no trouble. All right. I'll see you later, Dr. Larson. <laughs> ah, Dr. Larson. You've got a long time. Come in. Come in, please. Uh... I thought maybe you would be back for lunch. Well, there was so much to see. The time passed so quickly. Uh, uh, you had no lunch then. You will have some antipasto and a glass of wine. Oh, that sounds great. Good. Ah, that was delicious. I didn't realize how hungry I really was. <laughs> Mocchiati? <laughs> well, yeah, 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 half a glass. Oh, uh, that photograph on the wall of the statue of a man. Is that a Minotti, too? <laughs> it fools you, too. <laughs> fools me? Well, what do you mean? It's me. What do you mean, you? <laughs> it's a sculptured statue. Oh, you mean you did it? No, 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 no. No, come. I will show you in, in my workshop. Come. Hey. That's quite a studio. Mm. Here now, behind the screen, hanging on the wall. What is it? Here. Hold it. Feel it. Well, it, uh, it looks like, like something made out of a, a skin suit. That's right. A rubber skin suit, like divers use. The outside covered with granite powder. Sprayed on with lacquer. Incredible. See, I put on the skin suit. It covers my whole body, also my head and face. Then I spray, set up the camera for time exposure. The photograph, you see, it's me. <laughs> it's a joke, Dr. Larson, a joke. I have fun. I make what art critics call a living statue. <laughs> I like to experiment. Yeah. <laughs> I, I must say, that photograph sure fooled me. Uh, well, I guess I'd better be going now. Uh, please, you have a few minutes, just a few minutes. Uh, I'd like to show you a more, uh, a more serious experiment. Oh? Uh, here, behind this stone wall. Behind the stone wall? This big stone opens like a door. Now wait. I will put on the light. You see? A statue of a woman. It's beautiful. <sighs> touch it. Go ahead. Touch. Uh, well, it feels like granite. It looks like granite. Is it sculptured granite? No. Plaster cast, sprayed many times with granite powder spray. Good? Well, I don't know what to say. I, I am impressed. Uh, I, I'd like to come back sometime and learn just how you do it, if I may. But I'd, I'd better be on my way, and thanks so much for everything. I, 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 I would like to ask a favor, Dr. Larson. Favor? Well, 
what is it? Oh, oh, do, don't you feel well? Do you look sick? What? Your eyes look... One favor. One favor, please. What? Would you permit me to make a plaster cast of you? I mean, the lady is so lonesome. Me? Uh, a cast of me? Uh, what a crazy idea. Hey, let go of me. I will not hurt you, please. please. Let go of me. Get your hands off oh, me. Oh, no, no, do not leave. Let me go. Damn you. Let go of me. Oh, stay. Stay. You're, hey, you're hurting me. My neck. My neck. Uh, uh, my I do head. not mean my to push you head. down. Please. Uh, I'll help you up. Do not die, Dr. Larson. No, no. I do not want him to die, Miss Masterson. You believe me, yes? I only want to make a cast so you are not lonesome, Miss Masterson. <laughs> seems our young man didn't quite believe in art for art's sake. Or was he simply one of those social drinkers who can't take even a small glass of wine without getting plastered? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. I'm High Brown, producer of Mystery Theater. This month, we in Walt Disney World are giving 16 lucky people a week of thrilling entertainment at Walt Disney World near Orlando, Florida. Send your name and address. Each week for four weeks, we'll select winners in random drawings. You could win an all-expense-paid vacation for four, flying to the vacation kingdom of the world. Stay at the Dutch Inn, get free tickets to rides and attractions in the Magic Kingdom, including Disney's bicentennial spectacular, America on Parade. There are 400 Mickey Mouse watches as prizes also. Send your name and address to Mystery Theater, Box 1, Radio City Station, New York, 10019. Employees of CBS and Walt Disney not eligible. Contest void where prohibited. That's Mystery Theater, Box 1, Radio City Station, New York. Entries received by September 3 are eligible for at least one drawing. Winners will be notified by mail. Everybody, this is Cousin Bruce Morrow for the Foundation Church. Now, these are troubled times. Not a lot of money around. Work's kind of tough to get. Apathy's here. We're disillusioned. Wondering what, what's going to go down next. Well, it's easy to go along with it, right? I mean, just sit around and say, ah, who cares? You don't have the next guy worry about it. But does it have to be like this? Pride, dignity, truth. Being straight with one another. Now, these qualities have not disappeared. They've just gone to sleep for a while, right? But now's the time to wake them up. Only we can do it. This message brought to you by the Foundation Church, 111 East 38th Street, New York, New York. Zip 10016. We can say one thing for Pietro. At least his heart is in the right place. He realizes that man, and some women, cannot live happily alone. So he has created a companion piece for Miss Masterson. As for distraught Dr. Kellerman, a thing of beauty may be a joy forever, but certainly not in his present state of mind. He is understandably terribly upset, and has just hurried to Sheriff Talbot's office. I just got a telephone call, Sheriff, from Dr. Harvey Murdoch, curator of the Cincinnati Museum. It seems that his assistant, Dr. Arnold Larson, is two days overdue from his vacation. He wanted to know if I had any idea where he might be. Uh, why you? Oh, yes, I should explain. Larson visited the Minotti Garden about a week ago. He paid a courtesy call at my office. I had him driven out to the garden. And he didn't come back to Bartsville? No. He was spending his vacation backpacking and just wanted to stop off to see the garden. He'd never seen it. Yeah, go on. I phoned Pietro to tell him to expect Dr. Larson. And did Pietro see him? It didn't occur to me to ask him. 
I took it for granted. Now, good heavens, I... I hope this is not another missing persons case. Well, why don't we just drive out to see Pietro? Ah, uh, Dr. Kellerman, Sheriff Talbot, what a surprise. Sheriff Talbot would like to ask you a few questions, Pietro, about uh, Dr. Larson. Larson? Oh, oh, yes, Dr. Larson. Yes, from the Cincinnati Museum. Yeah, was he here the day Dr. Kellerman telephoned you to tell you he was coming? Of course he came here. He enjoyed the garden very much. How long was he here? Well, let me see. He came about 10 o'clock. He spent a long time in the garden. Came back to the cottage about 3 o'clock. And he left then, 3 o'clock? No, he stayed about one hour. Had out to pasta and wine. We talked. Nice man. He said he had to go. He wanted to get back to the Overlook before dawn. Camp there. Oh, yeah. There is a campsite there. And that was the last time you saw Dr. Larson? That is right. Uh, is something wrong? Something happened to Dr. Larson? He's missing. He should have been back in Cincinnati two days ago. Yeah. We better get back to town. Get out and alert to the ranger service and the highway patrol. You hear, Dr. Larson? Your Dr. Murdoch did not find you. You stay here with Miss Masterson. Soon they will find the backpack I threw down into the ravine by overlook. They will think you slipped over the rocks and fell into the river. They'll look, but they'll never find you. <laughs> never. Good morning, Dr. Kellerman. I'm Shelley Curtis of Arts and Leisure Magazine. So good to see you. Uh, uh, please do have a seat. Uh, uh, thank you. I understand you uh, want to do a color photo layout of the garden and the exhibits. Yes, for publication in about six weeks. Good. A week before the garden is reopened to the general public. Oh, splendid. Now, do you have enough background material? Oh, heavens, yes. Your PR department has flooded me with material. I've, uh, I've got some ideas I'd like to try. I hope they work. When do you plan to start shooting? Well, I'd like to do it in two sessions. First, this morning, to study the subjects, mm -hmm. get the feel of the place, and do overall shooting, probably until about, mm, about four o'clock. Right. Then I'd like another session towards dusk. Sunset with changing colors, golds, reds, and blues as darkness approaches. And finally, under the full moon, those nude granite figures of the fountain glistening wet in the moonlight. It certainly sounds wonderful. I'll uh, call the caretaker. I'll, uh, I'll drop by tomorrow before I leave. Hmm. Oh. Hello? Uh, this is Sheriff Talbot. I was just about to call you. I thought you'd want to know. Ranger found Larson's backpack at the foot of a rock slide. And Larson? No trace yet. They're searching downriver. I just phoned Dr. Murdoch. All right. Thanks, Ben. Well, it's too bad, but it could have been worse. At least it wasn't found inside the Minotti Garden. Uh, you said you were about to call me, Doc? Yes, Ben. You still have a highway patrolman on duty near the garden, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Mike calls you. Why? There'll be a magazine photographer working there. Name's Shelley Curtis. She might be doing some shooting around dusk and moonlight. You might alert Halsey. She might be shooting with Flash. Oh, yeah, I sure will. Thank you. See you later, Pietro. Excuse me, Miss Curtis. Yes? Before you start, do you mind if I ask a question? Oh, not at all. You take pictures for many hours, a hundred, two hundred pictures. <laughs> Your magazine will print how many? Oh, ten, twenty, maybe thirty. Huh. So much work. What time will you come back? Sunset is about 8 o'clock. Um, I'll be back by 7. Well, it gets dark fast. Here, I have an extra key for the gate. It's no good for you to wait outside by yourself in case I'm not here. Oh, thank you. Look, Miss Masterson. Look, Dr. Larson. It is me, Pietro, in my skin suit. I look like a statue. 
you. Uh, millions of people will see a picture of the three of us together. Hey, I'll take you, Miss Masterson, and put you on a hand truck. So... I now take you and I put you with Minotti statues, Miss Masterson. Then I come back for Dr. Larson. Then we wait for Miss Curtis to come back by moonlight to take a picture. I'll show you, Minotti. I'll show the whole world. I, too, am a genius. has gone to take a picture of Minotti. I must be in the picture with him. Excuse me, please. This is Halsey, Sheriff. I'm with Miss Curtis at the cottage. She all right? I'm uh, pretty shook up. What'd you think, Halsey? She insists she's not imagining it. We're walking up to where she says it happened. Have a look around. All right, keep me posted. Okay. Right, right there. But he's gone. There were three figures. That woman and the man on the ground and one was standing. One was standing! Uh, now, now, don't get excited, Miss Curtis. But you must believe me. Oh, sure, I believe There were no. three. Take it easy. Take... What was that? Did you hear it? No. Listen. Yeah. <gasps> From there. Come on, let's go. Oh. Yeah, there, I see it. That's the third figure I saw. Yeah. It, it's climbing that monument. The self-sculpture of Minotti at work. Come on down. Come on down or I'll shoot. No, no, no. Don't, don't shoot. He's coming down. Stay right there now. Don't run. I'll shoot. Don't run. Sheriff, this is Halsey. And there's something damn queer going on out here. We saw this statue, this man who looked like a statue. I ordered him to stop running, and it didn't. I got off two shots. He got away into the bushes. Did you hit him? Well, I don't know. All right, stay with Miss Curtis. I'll pick up Dr. Gellerman and the search party. Okay. There's something very odd here. Those two figures on the ground, the woman and the man, I, I know every statue in the garden. I've never seen these before. Your flashlight, Sheriff, please. Now, these are not Minotti statues. Sheriff, would you mind tapping them with the uh, butt of your pistol? That's not solid granite. Hey, it's cracking. Wait a minute, I'll try my knife. 
and head. Pull it off. Yeah, let me do it, Doc. Yeah. Pietro. Yes, Dr. Kellerman. Pietro Franzoni. And soon when Miss Curtis writes her story, the whole world will know I am just as good as Angelo Menotti was. Yes. Pietro. At least he was spared the Chinese water torture. He's in the state mental hospital. And poor Miss Curtis, she's going crazy too because she can't remember what she did with her camera and the film she shot. I'll be back shortly. The following fable is presented to make you want to buy a Buick. As a kid, everything I had was somebody else's. My, he certainly has his mother's eyes. And his father's hair. Boy, what a hairy little person. Well, I finally got something to call my own. A beautiful Buick LeSabre. With my kind of room, my kind of ride, and my kind of style. Heck, I even let my dad borrow it now and then. Because I love to hear people say, My, he certainly has his son's Buick. Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. In God We Trust, America Speaks. In the words of Thomas Jefferson, I must believe that religion substantially good, which produces an honest life, and we've been authorized by one whom you and I equally respect to judge of the tree by its fruit. Presented by the Catholic Communications Foundation. Here's a timely travel tip. If you drive up to the gate of Minotti Garden and find it still closed to the public, don't fret. Sit back, turn on your radio, and relax with another tale of mystery adventure. Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Joan Shea, Joan Arliss, Robert Dryden, and Jim Dukas. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Are you an unpublished author? Do you have a book-length manuscript ready or almost ready for publication? Or do you know of anyone else who is an unpublished author? If so, Vantage Press invites you to write to a leading New York publisher for a free illustrated brochure titled To the Author in Search of a Publisher. It explains how you may have your manuscript printed and published in a matter of months. Just write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. Whether your subject is fiction, non-fiction, poetry, or even scientific, specialized, or controversial, this 52-page brochure shows you how to arrange for prompt publication. To get your copy, write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. That's GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. If this is your first book, you'll find this free brochure especially valuable and informative. Write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Florida Orange Growers and Buick Motor Division. 
This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Find out how to help yourself, your country, and your community. You can belong to the Air National Guard for a day. Visit your Texas Air Guard and see how young men and women like you can work around some great aircraft, learn a valuable skill, pick up extra pay, help the country and community one weekend a month in the Air Guard. It's a weekend that could make a difference in your whole life. Find out more. Call your Texas Air National Guard and belong to the Guard for a day. The Guard W-F-A-A, Dallas, Fort Worth. CBS News. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, full work limited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.